So we are continuing with our video series on interesting questions for our residency interview preparation. And you need to know this because you need to be confident going into your interviews. And let's talk about a dreaded, a seriously dreaded question that people ask is that tell me about an interesting case. Now I have been doing this for a couple of years and I have been guiding and helping people prepare for the interviews, right? So people have not prepared for an interesting case and that is a big problem. And people are awfully scared about uh, what are they going to ask and how are they going to present. So the reason they're asking this question is because a lot of people from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, the Philippines, they've already done some type of residency or you know something, some internship. And a lot of people actually falsely put the, it in their CV that they have done it when they have not done it. So this question actually uh, tends to clarify or tends to differentiate whether these people actually know how to present a case because if you've done your residency or internship you should know how to present a case and I'm gonna give you a sample answer and this question if you do it with confidence gives you the ability to highlight your clinical experience and your ability to handle complex cases and you are going to be presenting a complex case and they want you to go in an organized manner and you need to also emphasize your problem solving skills here and your commitment to patient care. That is gonna be key over here. So a sample answer for you here. Well, thanks for asking this question and one case does come to mind. And I encountered this during my internal medicine rotation, which involved, I believe, a 56 year old male who presented with severe abdominal pain, a right upper quadrant, a fever, as well as uh, jaundice. His past medical history included diabetes, a type 2, hypertension. Um, he did not have any significant surgical history. Uh, this patient actually reported that the pain had started gradually over the past couple of days and it has progressively worsened, accompanied with nausea as well as non bloody, non bilious vomiting. Now, the review system pertinent findings include the patient reported generalized weakness and dark urine. He denied any recent travel or sick contacts, but did mention consuming uh, undercooked uh, fish with a recent family gathering. Uh, pertinent vitals include currently uh, a fever of 101.1, heart rate 110, uh, blood pressure uh, normal tensive, uh, respiratory status was unremarkable. Physical exam pertinent findings include scleral icterus, uh, right upper quadrant tenderness uh, to abdominal palpation. Uh, Murphy sign was uh, negative, however, and there was some appreciable uh, three centimeters hepatomegaly. Now, uh, laboratory findings initially showed an elevated WBC count and definitely had an eosinophilic um, finding on it. Liver function tests revealed elevated ALT, ASD, um, ALKFOS, as well as bilirubin levels. However, a hepatitis screen was clearly negative, and that was a s interesting finding because normally people in our part of the world come in with hepatitis because it is very prevalent. Blood cultures were sent out. Lactic acid was within normal limits. Uh, we definitely had a imaging done. The initial abdominal ultrasound demonstrated a hepatomegaly with no evidence of biliary obstruction or gallstones. And a CAT scan, subsequent CAT scan of the abdomen um, just demonstrated a mild hepatic enlargement um, with some diffuse uh, pericumbal changes. Now all these initial tests turned out to be negative. There's nothing really that we can actually work on. So uh, then we thought, and actually I was the one who was interviewing him again the second day. And we talked about all the results that we, everything is fine and we couldn't find really anything significant. But moving forward, we added a few more tests, um, alpha one natnatrypsin. But then uh, with the recollection that patient has eosinophilia, hepatomegaly, and the recent consumption of uncooked fish, that uh, prompted us to expand further to look for parasitic infections. And serologic testing for liver fluke turned out to be positive, and it turned out positive for opus torsius. So that was identified, and um, we had a stool examination confirmed uh, with liver fluke eggs. So I definitely thought this case was fairly interesting uh, because it had to combine all aspects. Uh, we had findings um, from the patient's history as well as review sy symptoms. Um, vitals, uh, physical exam findings were also there. And of course, the history <laughs> was the one that uh, probably um, led further to this diagnosis. And this patient was initiated on a course of uh, praziquantel, which is an anti-parasitic medication, and it's uh, supposed to be effective against uh, liver flukes. And additionally, of course, we had provided supportive care, including hydration and pain management. 
and the patient did well. Uh, within, within the week, patient was feeling much, much better. The patient's liver enzymes by the end of the week had normalized and the patient was advised to uh, continue with dietary precautions and prevent reinfections and avoid um, un uncooked food. And to me, this case was a powerful reminder uh, on the importance of considering a wide differential, uh, especially with uh, somewhat atypical presentations, especially when the initial investigations don't lead you uh, towards the etiology of the ailment. So, of course, a successful outcome reinforced my passion for internal medicine and my commitment uh, to providing comprehensive uh, patient-centered care. And um, hopefully you found this uh, case interesting as well. I think that should be your answer. Well, this will just get you an idea that you just need to know how to present and everything else is pick a case. I remember that we had so many cases of uh, tuberculosis, advanced stages of tuberculosis, um, tubercular ileitis, uh, POTS disease, that you don't necessarily see here in the US. And if your interviewer has been from, you know, the, the, the developing world, India, Pakistan, the Philippines, Nigeria, um, anywhere else for that matter, and you have these rare diseases, and if your interviewer is from this, uh, this part of the world, they may actually connect with you a bit more if you're able to bring out a disease or something uh, that, you know, rekindles their, their, their memory. Thank you so much, I'm Dr. Amir Khan, bye-bye. You need some more help looking to connect, then I will have links in the description. And you can probably find my 25 questions and answers, a PDF. Gives you the questions and the answers and you can practice on your own. You need further help. Uh, you can check the link in the description as well. Uh, possible sessions um, with small groups as well as possibly one-to-one. -one. And if you want to become a member of my channel on uh, YouTube, and we will be having live interview preparation sessions as well consider becoming a member there as well and of course we'll chat over on facebook as well i will have all the links for all of my social handles in the description hopefully it helps thank you